Hey folks, how y'all doing today? I'm Jaime Del Parra of JLD Instinctive Archery. I'm here on the Wingman 115 channel coming at you with some knife reviews, so stick around. Hello folks, thanks for joining us here on the Wingman 115 channel. We're happy to have you here with us. I haven't been on the channel in a bit, so guess what? I'm coming in hard on this return to uh, showcase two knives, same company, two different styles of camp cooking knives that we're going to talk about. So let's just jump into it. So the first one, this came out, uh, I believe it's been a couple of years now, but the Ontario Knife Company Hunt Plus Camp Knife. Now this design was, in, it had an inspiration from three different things. Camp knife, cook, cooking knife like a butcher knife, and a combat survival knife. So they kind of like took those elements and blended it into, into one. But here's something I just discovered. I was going online to make sure that I was correct in all my information. It looks like it's on back order. Now I know on some uh, knife websites, it said that's either discontinued or not available, but according to the Ontario Knife Company sales site, it said it's on back order. I'm gonna talk about the sheath real quick that I have hanging over here. Simple nylon component. And it did, I did some quick mods on this. I, it had two straps, uh, one here that you see that I've, I've kept. And you could tell that here's the snap piece for another one. It came across on the blade. Now I took that off, off I cut it off because in inserting and extracting the knife blade as it crossed over on that cutting side of the knife, it seemed to, to hit it. Not just the nylon, but also the actual metal snap. So I decided to remove that altogether. So that's one mod I did to it. And another mod, as you can see, I have a blaze orange paracord. That's so I can hang this up. I, I probably wouldn't wear this knife on my belt. I mean, you could obviously around camp, no big deal. You could actually probably throw a lanyard, have it around your neck as a, as a camp knife. So you're not running around the woods, you're at camp and there it is, boom. But I like to have this so in low light conditions, if it's hanging up on a tree, like you saw me ha hanging it, it's easy to spot. And obviously same thing with this lanyard over here. Again, Ontario Knife Company. This is the Camp Plus Santoku folding knife. Beautiful fo folding knife. There's uh, two other knives in this series, a chef's knife and a, and a serrated knife. But a beautiful folding knife, you're looking at about four and a quarter inch blade, uh, nine inches or nine and a half closed overall. Again, you can see I got the high-vis paracord in case I hang it up on something, but it makes it easy to spot in the pack when I'm pulling it out. Beautiful uh, uh, rear lock, traditional lock. And as I mentioned, that's at home, I use a full-size Santoku that I love. It's a Viking, uh, seven inch blade, and I love it. One of the things that both of these knives have that, that I like to point out that's very handy, and I don't see a lot of people talking about it, whether it's, uh, well, primarily in outdoors blades, but it's the heel, this back part. That's great for some really close in peeling that you'll probably see me do when I'm uh, uh, peeling some garlic. So that's a feature that I like on both of these. Obviously one's a little bigger and this one may be able to do more tasks outside of the of the table and we're going to play around with that and we're going to try to push this one to see how much more of the woodcraft stuff but the primary focus will be in the cooking and obviously this looks like apples and oranges and it is but what I'm trying to do is just get a feel of both of them see where they where they may excel where they may fall short on stuff and just have a good time so Thanks for coming along and let's get to cooking. We'll fold this guy, put it aside, go with a big kahuna. Put a little onion here. It's gonna create a little flat spot first. Flat spot, cut it right down the middle, see how this feels. Now I can already tell this big spine, it's already kind of creating a little bit of a, of a challenge. Not a big deal, but it's to be understood. Simple fine cuts on this guy. That large spine is making it a little challenging to do what I want to do. Come in, shake a little bit off here. Not bad. 
that thick spine is creating a little bit of, a, of an issue. So we already have that. Start peeling off some of this onion. And it looks like I already got myself. Let's do a pause. We're keeping it real. I can't take Jaime anywhere. <laughs> he cut himself again with his own blade. <laughs> real stuff happens, folks. You know, this is, but we're out here having fun. This is what we do. And uh, Jaime's making me breakfast, so I really can't complain. So all is good in the woods. All right, so I know we put this in the video. Uh, I already kind of nicked myself with that heel, the heel that I say that I like. Again, this is a new knife to me, so a little blood, little DNA there. Luckily, I have my little pocket first aid kit through the Band-Aid on there. Now, I want to say this, and I failed to say that in the intro. Both blades, the the camp, the larger camp knife, and and this Santoku folder, they are sporting my edge on it. The factory edges are were satisfactory. They came satisfactory. But I typically will, right away, as soon as I buy a knife, I don't care if it's a budget knife or a high-end knife, I will put my own edge. I normally uh, get rid of the shoulders. So these things are screaming sharp, and that's why this one gave me a little bit of a love bite. And, uh, yeah, so and good times. And we have a video on the channel of Jaime sharpening blades. So if you want to learn the Jaime edge, I'll link the uh, video in the description down below. All right, so let's get back to some cooking here. Same style of onion cutting technique. I'm dealing with a shorter edge. Let me tell you, this thing is screaming sharp. And obviously it's a lot easier to cut than with that bigger blade. Try to get this on camera and also properly cut this onion. We don't show you this stuff on the Pioneer Woman. <laughs> okay, now I'm coming in. For all you uh, culinary masters out there, forgive my onion cutting skills. I know it's not the best. Try to get my little claw grip here. For those that don't know, you want to use the knuckles on the fingers to keep from cutting yourself. I'm just gonna call it good with that. What are you doing here, Anna? All right, so here we're just gonna move on to the garlic. Onions and garlic are pretty much a, a staple for me when it comes to uh, cooking. So uh, yeah, I love them. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pop this guy, peel it out. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna do one. Again, it's sporting my edge, cutting very well. You gotta be careful. Drop that in there. Do another one. Pop it. Get the skin off. Peel it out. This one, I'm not even gonna get fancy with it. I'm just gonna try to chop it up. Small pieces. Watch the fingers. All right, so that actually was very nice. I liked it. Even though it's a longer blade, I still had a good control of it, felt good. So we're gonna move on to the folding knife. Now, I don't know if I wanna do that, how you saw me open up that other clove because of the shorter blade. So already that's a problem there that I'm gonna have. Maybe I can close it. Yeah, I don't think so. So already that Maybe tells use me. use the handle. Yeah, I could use the handle if I, if I so chose to. Let's try that. I'm just trying to think. Sure. The box. And let's use right here. That's going to be probably the stronger point. So What's the handles made out of G10? Or? Yeah. So that worked well. You got some aggressiveness yeah. there. So good call, John. You have broken clocks right twice a day. <laughs> so here we go with this piece. Actually, let's go ahead and break the other one if I can find it on the ground. Get that earthy flavor. Get the earthy flavor. Awesome, I love that. Boom. Some yule so again, if you're going to do that, use this solid piece where uh, it joins together. 
and that way you're away from the cutting edge. <laughs> Man. Can't take him anywhere, folks. Life safety 101 over here. I can, but I gotta bring a first aid kit. Alright, so let's go ahead and chop these up. Again, a nice short little blade, thin. Normally with a big knife I like to go from rear forward. In this case, it feels better to go from, from up ahead and bring it back. But here's a little rocking motion action. Get that root part out of there. Yeah, simple, easy. It's kind of funny. It's it's weird working for a with a smaller. Don't want that part. With a smaller uh, blade for kitchen work. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the bell pepper. Going on with a larger knife. I know some people like to core it out. You know what? We're just gonna slab it out. Again, I want to feel knowing that that thicker spine is. Wow, didn't even didn't even really bother it. So, yeah, it felt really good. Get rid of that. Trying to keep a somewhat of a clean kitchen here, guys. So I'm just going to cut this guy in half now. And then continue to cut it in half. I'm actually just trying to remove material out of the way, guys. I don't need that much for what we're going to cook. So. Right. Actually, let me say. Do you think they went a little bit thicker spine on that because it is an outdoor chef knife? Correct. They wanted to keep that concept of somewhat of a utilitarian multi-purpose. So if I needed to go and and baton some uh, small pieces of wood to make some kindling, you could see that that would work if if, if need be. If need be, if you had to go and do that. But uh, it's robust enough where we might play around and do some a little hardcore use on on this guy i'm thinking like boning out an elk oh boning yeah for sure. white tailed deer for sure why not you know you're I going through the shoulder of an elk you, you know you'd want something with a little girth to it sure i mean i could maybe see even cleaning out a fish with this maybe it's if it's thin enough depending on the fish well it's like anything right it's a tool you, it's, you have to learn the capabilities it's a that. tool yeah so i'm just cutting just to cut and I'm, I'm going back and forth in my mind of how I want to grip this. Now, what I like more about this than the Santuco is that I, that blade is dropping past my fingers. So that's great on the cutting board. Uh, here, your handle and fingers are going to hit that cutting board more so. Okay. That's where almost... It almost has like a choil in it, like a modified choil on the fixed blade. Correct. And, and I'll be honest, uh, as I speak with my band-aid on my thumb, I, I've never liked knives that have the, the finger choil because I have cut myself. My index finger has cut itself on some of those knives that have those finger choils. Uh, these types of cooking knives, I tend to do more of a pinch grip with what I'm doing. So I'm not too worried about that, but yeah, ironically the the knife gods that needed a sacrifice today so here we go on to the lodge them yes yes <laughs> i'm going to try to do something a little different uh just to try to do something different whittle that out it came out nice if i wanted to do that action right there. yeah <laughs> in jaime's cocina yeah if i was in benihana i'd have my hands all taped up with band-aids we're going to trademark that, Jaime's Cocina. Jaime's Cocina, yeah. This one is slicing way more better than the other one. Obviously, it's a thinner edge. And again, I want to try to get the right type of grip. With this one, I, it seems like I'm focusing most of my work up front because I don't have, again, that drop. My hand and, and, the, and the blade are hitting that cutting board. So... Let's do this, get this out of the way. One of these camp outs, I'm gonna have you make pozole out here. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Some menudo for the hangovers. Just don't use the uh, sardine oil like on, <laughs> on my ramen. Yeah. I, I, pr I pretend to be a tough guy. I'm not doing sardine oil, I'm sorry. <laughs> sardine and smoked <laughs> oysters, those are the best. Blue oyster cult, I'll listen to the music, <laughs> but I'm not eating the blue oysters. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's another good good day in the woods. A little bit of this zucchini. I want to see how that works. Move this guy out of the way. So, as in all cooking, you want a flat spot. 
Uh, I'd rather keep it here. I don't want to drop down. Well, I guess let's give it a try. This big old fatty, tell you what, it, it does push it out. I guess if we were to be batoning wood, you can feel how much it pushes that out of the way. Let me shift gears and go with this guy just to feel. Get in my grip, get the grip that I want to feel. Yeah, big difference, obviously. You can hear it. You can hear it. This one's like, this one's separating. It's not cutting, it's separating. This one's going to slice through, but again, thick blades, apples and oranges. But it also could be the way that that blade is profiled like that more of like a ginsu uh, correct cooking knife correct and as as it is as it is so just do a little bit of that I like love, to, I love these i try to go as thin as i can for I like what we're doing than sardine oil. <laughs> <laughs> smoked oysters that's a that's a delicacy with I, the sardines. I'm, I'm giving them a hard time because we were on a camp out guys and he <laughs> He made a <laughs> cup of soup with oysters, and then he put sardine oil in it. And I was like, "Yes, bro, you had me at cup of soup, <laughs> but you lost me with the uh, oysters and the uh, sardine oil." Yeah, it's definitely uh, an acquired taste. It's oh a delicacy. All right, final item. We're gonna hit this uh, little jalapeno again, nice and slick. Cutting that. What I like to do is then run it down the middle. Some people like to remove the seeds, core it out. I like to keep them. That's that's for me. That's where the flavor's at. But what I am gonna do, I'm gonna flip it over again, getting on that flat spot. Me and the wife, we make mean stuffed jalapenos with uh, like a cream cheese filling and bacon wrapped. If you guys want to see that here on the channel, how I make them, leave a comment down below. Make the bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers that sounds really good oh man let me tell you actually i have had them they come out good man you got to bring the pepto bismol but they come oh, out yeah. really good all right we'll see how that thick spine how that feels i mean it's a small enough piece where i feel it i feel it struggling a little bit more because of the thickness but no big deal i'm feeling like julia child right now <laughs> My, we're channeling julia child right now yes Split that down the middle. Hey, almost on cue. The Marines are flying the Ospreys. Yep. It wouldn't be a video without the Marines buzzing the tower. Mm. She's not too bad, despite the thickness. I mean, we're, this is a shallow, shallow material at this point. It's not that deep, so I don't have to worry about that feeling of the big separation. Is that a on. flat grind on that blade? Yes, it is. Both of these blades have flat grinds, which work really well in my opinion. Which I'm surprised because you are a hollow grind fanboy. It depends. It depends on the blade. Uh, it, it depends on the thickness. I don't think I would like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the chef's knife. Again, this is Sontuko. The chef knife is hollow grind i forgot where the spine ends but then it goes into a hollow grind and i don't know I've, i favor flat grinds when it comes to the kitchen uh speaking of the hollows i do have this on my utility it is a little bit of a hollow and uh it seems to work for me there have been times if i'm pushing through some hard material i might experience a little bit of of a roll but you know what that's what steels are for it'll correct that real right away and we're going to talk about steels and that'll be our little bonus round in this towards the end but uh let's get back to what we're doing at hand i think we're ready to to start putting stuff uh on on the burner here so again these work great one of the things i forgot to mention i think i forgot to mention was uh the price this one again 30 to 30 about 30 to 50 dollars and again it's uh it's currently on back order possibly on back order this one 13 to 15 i've seen it actually as low as about nine i think nine to 15 and for the... note i didn't mean to interrupt first one's made in the U usa usa that one's made in this is made in china okay and full disclosure full so disclosure guys that. same company ontario knife company they've been making knives for the military here in the states for a long time but some of the the more budget friendly knives are overseas but again Somewhere in the neighborhood 30 to 50 great price for this one made in the US again It looks like it's either on back order for whatever reasons uh, I don't think it's discontinued, but there's a whole bunch of others in the series of the hunt plus series. This is camp plus. Okay, 
I love being pampered out in the woods. This is fun. <laughs> hey, in it, ice cube, ice cube tongs. And if you're not clicking them at least twice, bad luck will come to you. That's a man thing. That's right. Probably through the process here. What are we doing? Honey? All right. So besides me burning the, the bacon, uh, what I'm doing is obviously just frying up this bacon and really it's the bacon grease that I want because we're about to go into placing in our veggies. Notice I'm using this little handy dandy uh, multi-purpose type of a uh, wrench for the plate, pardon me. So now I'm gonna start adding our chopped veggies. I'm not gonna put everything in there. Uh, yeah, I do apologize, I got a little bit of a burn going on guys. I got a little too carried away. Well, that's the one thing about cooking it. So yeah, well, I, super hard to control the heat. Yeah, I did uh, go overboard on the heat. So anyway, so onions, garlic, bell pepper, a little zucchini, and some jalapenos. I think that should be good enough. Man, guys, if they had smell vision, OMG, baby. Try to get a good sizzle on everything. The hardest part is just keeping a, an even an even burn, and I'm not doing a good job of it. My biofuel burns quick and hot, so. And his two chef is the cameraman today. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I've learned to keep a grip on on the plate so you don't dump things over. I saw a good episode with Nothing Fancy where he had some bacon on the sizzle on one of his backpacking stoves and right when he was ready, he dumped it over. <laughs> Man, I, you know, Nothing Fancy years ago, like 12 years ago, I missed those expeditions. Yeah. Oh, man. And they were like epic Ooh. movies, you know, up to an hour long, three-part series. Yep. I had a chance to interview Nothing Fancy. I'll leave a link in the video description down below as well. Got him at SHOT Show, he was trying to go undercover and I caught him. And uh, really nice guy. Kind of like Benny Hollis when they're making their right. Yeah. Kind of spoiling me today. Oh yeah. Tell you what, it's long overdue. Wingman, he's a he's a master camp cook, and he spoiled me many many times over. This is long overdue. Now here's a little trick when it comes to eggs, guys. I I want to let the flame go down a little lower, and I do just kind of a a very slow turn. Got a little eggshell action going on here. That's alright. I never heard anybody. A little calcium in the system. That's it. I do want to put a little bit of lumber in there so it doesn't die out on me, but I don't want the flames kicking up as high as they were. Uh, gotta get some of that small stuff in there. Like I said, half the battle is making sure that your that your flame is on point. Now I'm gonna add just okay, a little. This? this is a mixture of seasoned salt and ground pepper that I put in this simple little. It was like a little meds can, uh, container. So a high made version of a Montreal. Yeah, pretty much. So just adding a little bit, not a lot, just for the seasoning. And you can see where I'm, when I'm doing it. I'm doing it after the eggs have uh, been cooking for a minute. I don't even mind the smoke in my eyes. I'm gonna have to take it off the flame. It's getting a little too hot now, guys. I'm telling you that pine burns hot and fast. Yeah, you know. Again, my culinary buddies are gonna be busting my cojones for. And we're exercising caution. We have fire extinguishers. Yeah. And a fire bucket of water close by. We are responsible. Yeah. Uh, 
stewards of the wood. That is correct. So at this point, I think I'm going to take this off the flame. All right, so I'm going to do another little interesting trick. I'm going to get, I got to get this cooking again. I'm going to throw some more bacon on there. And I'm doing it this time primarily for the, for the grease because I want to fry up the tortillas with some bacon grease so they don't just go on a hot pan. That'll give this more flavor. Oh, well, we're gonna make some street tacos. Yeah. Are you throwing the tortillas in the Here's on the, the, the delicate dance and adding a little bit of lumber just to kind of keep the, is it running? All right, some hot eats, man. All right, here we go. I'm ready. So at this point, guys, this bacon is here just to create uh, more grease for the tacos. So here's what I'm doing. Set it up. It's going to be hot, John. So so hot it hurts. Yeah. Not only is it going to be hot from the pan, but it might be spicy from the jalapenos. I don't know how much heat they got. That's all right. I've been married to a Latina for 37 years. There you go, brother. Enjoy. All right. Woo! I'm going to let it cool down just a hot minute here. Yeah. And again, I'm putting awesome. the bacon. The bacon here is just to coat the tortilla and also keeps the bacon from burning any further. But I'm just going to kind of keep repeating the process. How is it, John? Good? Mm. If I'm not talking, it's good. That's what I'm talking about. Kid tested and mother approved. <laughs> Again, bacon's just on there to coat the tortillas. Let me give you another one, dude, when you're, when you're ready. So putting, again, the bacon on here just kind of keeps the flavor on there, keeps the bacon from burning. And I'm dancing the dance of keeping the flame burning, but not overly powerful. That's where we just got to play with these stoves to find the sweet spot. Yeah. And it's going to vary on your location. Different wood, the climate, yeah. a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture in the air is going to affect it. Yeah. I think Jaime's been playing me all these years. <laughs> letting me cook when he's the chef. I've been sizing him up, sizing up his cooking. He's Can't like, sucker. <laughs> so while we're here doing eating this guys uh just briefly talking about the knives that we tested have another one buddy mm -hmm. Thank I'll, you. I'll start off with the uh the folder the camp plus santuku folding knife i think it's it's great it's awesome especially if you're a backpacker and you want to throw it in the pack that's what i do i have it in my uh, Hidden Woodsman backpack. And uh, it, it's it's small, it's compact, it slices, it's great for what it's supposed to do. Could I do some feather sticking and could I do some carving? Sure, it's thin, it's got a great point, it's got a great heel as I just found out with, again, my edge on it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I love it. Uh, lightweight, super affordable. Uh, that's been my biggest thing is buying quality knives at an affordable price because I've lost knives, I've gifted knives, I've had knives confiscated, uh, it's, I've parted ways. So when, when it's an expensive knife, uh, over $100, over $80, you don't want any of those things to happen. But when it's an inexpensive knife, hey, you know, and also is it available, is it readily available? So that's a big thing and that's where this one comes into play. Really like it for, for those reasons. If I can jump in real quick. Yes. We're up near Pacific Crest Trail. A lot of through hikers if you're an ultralight backpacker if you're a m minimalist that might be something for you now obviously it's not a one tool option it's not like a actual woods knife but when you're on a three-day hike or a through hike that you're not doing that anyway so that would be a perfect option for you camp chefing it on the trail I really like that. I might have to get one for myself. 
Now going on to the larger one, the Hunt Plus Camp Knife. I What I like about it is its versatility. It's long enough if you do need to baton and prep some of your, your fire, your, your lumber here for the small stove. It actually helped in doing a little bit of batoning. It works great. I don't want to say one tool option, but you can you can kind of shed a little bit of of the of the tools having this one guy or as a backup knife. I like to have another heavier duty fixed blade, whether it's on my belt, on my gear. And then this, I saw it as a backup knife to those woods tools. So it's a camp cook knife, but a backup knife. And I am actually, I'm not gonna pick over one or the other. I'm actually gonna pair the, these two because of the slim profile with the sheath, in the sheath, in my Hidden Woodsman pack, these two make a great team for me. Uh, I do kind of go overboard on, on the cutlery that I take out, but that's just me. I have these two in, the, in my Hidden Woodsman uh, Day Ruck. I got whatever blade I'm gonna carry on my person, and I even have a Topps Barakimo on my Canteen Survival Kit. So, hey, because I've lost blades out and about, I wanna make sure I got backups on backups. Two is one and one is none, right? So, great all around, heavy duty camp knife, great backpacker, uh, slim and trim for your food prep and some utility. But for me, together as a team, great. Made in the USA. Got to find out if it's going to be back on the market sooner or later. This one, it is made in China, but it is Ontario Knife Company. They got a, a good history. You'll see the numbers of 1889 on their logo. Uh, I believe that's the year they started. So they've been around making knives for the military for quite some time here in the United States. John, any closing words? Um, I could see the larger knife, um, actually, like if you're in deer camp, hunting camp you know if you're on an extended multi-day you have uh, a tent in your an outfitter I could see something like that in your kit for food prep and like I said you're harvesting that elk you're harvesting that white-tailed deer whatever it may be it's got that nice drop point on the front flat grind it, it's a nice knife and for the money right now with gas the way that it is I mean we're trying to find value items for you folks out there to be able to still get out and have a quality experience in the outdoors. And Jaime found these two, and we said, you know what, we'll showcase it on the channel. This is something that you folks might be interested in. Yep, yep, yeah, so uh, all in all, I love them both. Uh, apples and oranges, uh, but they make a great team together. If you wanna use one or the other, you're gonna be fine, depends on your application. So I'll tell you what, I need to get into these tacos. And uh, I want to say thank you for watching this video. I appreciate John having me back on the channel. It's been a minute. But, uh, yeah, good times, brother. Thanks. We'll see you guys on the next video. Take care, folks.